We're going to start our session now. Be comfortable, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. And keep your back, neck, head straight in one line. Gently close your eyes and focus your mind to this bell sound and follow the sound, please. Also, while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing. नमो तस् भगवतो वरतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो वरतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो वरतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So keep your right palm on your left and neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring your attention to your body. Observe your toes and scan mentally three times and say so pateva oh may i be well and happy take a moment and think we gathered here in this evening to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting. May my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation, exhalation, and later observe the impermanent, unsatisfactory nature and selflessness within form, feeling, sensation, formations, and recognition. So in the beginning, mentally relax your body step by step. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Relax your eyes. Relax your ears. Relax your nose. Relax your upper lip. And relax your lower lip. Relax your skin. Relax your whole face muscles. Relax your teeth. Relax your tongue. Relax your mouth. Relax your throat.
relax your neck. Relax your shoulders, arms, elbow, forearms, palms, fingers, fingertips. Relax your all back muscles and relax your spine. Relax your chest. And relax your all abdominal muscles. Relax your lungs. Relax your heart. Relax your liver, relax your kidneys, relax your gallbladder, relax your pancreas, relax your small intestine, relax your large intestine. Relax your all abdominal organs. Relax your butt. Relax your thigh. Relax your knee. Relax your calf muscles. Relax your foot and relax your toes. Relax your whole body muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, bone marrows, and whole skeleton. Release the tension in your mind and keep relax your face muscles. So bring attention to the lower part of your body. And observe, is there any strong sensation, tightness, heaviness? Just recognize and get a mental note. You may see many places, so each and every place recognize separately. Don't interfere with anything and don't try to change it. Don't disturb to the, the pain or the sensation. And bring attention to your lower back area. See if there any sensation, tightness, heaviness.
and bring your attention to upper shoulder. Arms, elbow, forearms, palms, fingers, fingertips. Now slowly bring your attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area. Deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. And so once you recognize the sensation and settle down there and observe, and through the sensation, recognize this is inhalation, this is exhalation. Deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times. Just keep focus to the sensation. Follow the entire continuation of the inhalation exhalation. Also, you may experience some inhalation exhalation become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. Just recognize and accept it.
and drop all the details related to inhalation, exhalation. Just be with the sensation and recognize impermanent, unsatisfactory nature. And selflessness within form, feeling, sensation, formations, or recognition. You no need to go into all five, just get into one thing and just observe.
bring your attention to your body. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light. Through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also, as far as you can, through galaxies, other planets, stars, reminding yourself like this with clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pale or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. to your left side. And to your right side. Downward. and upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself 
May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Sri Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So, dear Dharma practitioners, in this ordinary life, whatever we experience through our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind, we feel like solid. And we feel like there is something. But when you deeply observe, when your mind able to, to become sharp and clear, to see things very clearly, and you recognize this everything like a flux, everything moving, everything like water. But in the surface level, our mind is so rough, heavy. Why? Because of the, the experience that we accumulated from birth to now, make our mind rough, hard, solid like this. And because of that, so whatever we create, that hardness, that solidness comes through that our bodily, verbally and mentally action. So if you able to, to go back to the original form of your mind, And then, then you will recognize that whatever we experience like this in this world, as a conventional or even in, the, in a psychological level, so whatever it exists, it only for that moment. So through the meditation, we develop our mind to get into that understanding. So that is the most important thing when you get practicing meditation. You start to sharp, clear, uplift your awareness to experience that. The original form of existence not that what we take out of the condition of our mind. So when it comes to that experience, as we know, our body means, our life means five aggregate, form, feeling, sensation, formation, recognition. And the form is, uh, is the, this body is a form. The physical structure is form. So, when it comes to form, there are two things, name and form. So, the form always carry the name also. To sharp your mind, clear your mind, there is a technique that in day-to-day -day life that you can use. 
try to try to practice it yourself a little bit. Whatever the perception come to you, so that perception is kind of like a form. So it has a name and form, two things, and try to separate it. It is a very, very good mental exercise, separating name and form. And uh, as example, the letter A. So then when it come to the letter A, so there the A itself that the name. And when you write it, so that is the form. And B, so in your mind now that you, you recognize it as a form through the, the name. So in your mind, when you become sharp and clear without mixing the name and form, you can see the the form without the name. So that will make your mind sharp to, to deeply recognize things. So anything, water bottle, wood, computer, house, car, anything, whatever the name, so try to separate the name and the form. Because naturally what we do, we mix these two things Re to recognize point of view, we, we mix it, these two things always. So that is why we mostly come to a point to understand or believe there is something. So once you start to separate the name and form, there is another way you can access to this all the material world and recognize there is no something solid as we think. So when it comes to five aggregates, form, feeling, sensation, formations, recognition, so Buddha and all the enlightened masters also have form, feeling, sensation, formation, recognition. And we also have the form, feeling, sensation, formations, recognition. Everyone in the world, in the past, in the present and in the future, whoever, as a human being, that whatever this life experience, they have this, all the five aggregates. But what is the different with the Buddha and enlightened masters and what is the different with us? So in our form, feeling, sensation, formations and recognition, we mix, we use this all the five aggregates with four kind of qualities. But when it comes to the Buddha and enlightened masters, and they don't have that, that qualities in that they are five aggregates. Otherwise, they also have the, the same five aggregates. So what are that four qualities that we separately have in this conventional life? As ordinary people, we carry that qualities. So that is why we become ordinary people. So otherwise, if you able to purify your form, feeling, sensation, formation, so, and the recognition from these four qualities, which I'm going to, to mention, and if you purify your five aggregates from this, that you also come to a point to experience the, the liberation. So what are those four qualities? So first one is uh, the, this all 
four qualities called upadana. Upadana means grasping, holding, clinging, harboring. So, first one called kama upadana. Kama upadana means, oh, this is me. I want to find the satisfaction. For that satisfaction, what you do, you use or you invest your form, feeling, sensation, formation, recognition. To find the satisfaction, you invest, you use, you maintain your five aggregates. with the desire to find the satisfaction for your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. So desire or emotions, this all bound to that. So that is the first one. So, but when it comes to the Buddha or the enlightened masters, they also have the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. Then they also have the perception. They also have the form, feeling, sensation, formations, recognition. But what they don't have, they don't have the upadana. That means when you experience something, they don't have the desire to hold it with that experience to look for satisfaction. So I, when we go with the negations, you can, you can recognize the, the very nature of it. Because otherwise, before we attain to enlightenment, we cannot understand it. But practice point of view, just, uh, just to recognize, we can go with the negations. So that's how the, even the, we, we recognize the Nibbana also. When you don't have this, you're going to be like this, like that way. So, so the first one, then when you in with your form, feeling, sensation, formations, and recognition, no any desire to find the satisfaction, and you don't use or invest or maintain or guide or push or clinging to hold the satisfaction. And that is the first one. And the second one, Ditti Upadana. So the Ditti Upadana means you have a, the idea, there is me and I used to be in the past. In the present, I exist. In the future also, I going to be. That is the idea. That is called Ditti Upadana. So Upadana means holding, grasping. And now, you know, I was here and I am here and I going to be here with that intention to maintain that idea, what you use, you, you invest, you use, you maintain your form, feeling, sensation, formations and recognition. And that is where you come to, to make it permanent. This is me. So in, when it come to you, it, it come name, and form both mixed together. In case if you start to separate it and look, you're going to recognize it's not like that. So the enlightened masters, even though they have form, feeling, sensation, formations, recognition, even though they carry the body, even though they have the body, they don't have this Ditti Upadana. That's mean they don't have the, the idea or oh, I, I was there and this is me, I going to be like that and they not hold it to that idea and they don't invest form, feeling, sensation, formations or recognition.
to permanent that idea. But conventional life mean, ordinary life mean, behind the sansara means, we always try to permanent this concept. This is me. And the seal of the upadhan. Seal of the upadhan means kind of like a rituals and following precepts or the methods, patterns to permanent that this is me. And to gain whatever you want or whatever you want to become. So you always invest your form, feeling, sensation, formations, recognition in different, different, using different, different activities or the methods or the rituals or the patterns, different kind of activities. In the ancient time also used to be and but not in the same form, but still we do the same. So it like this. In the ancient time, people used to, to follow many kind of yogic methods to liberate themselves or attain to, to higher level of existence. And they used to practice different kind of uh, uh, rituals. And they used to believe kind of like uh, acting like a cow or living like a cow, following like a cow, help them to liberate them. And then, but today we don't do that kind of things. But it's still sometimes in different form. So as example, if, a, if a somebody come to you and tell, you know, that uh, you can be very successful, put this uh, bracelet to your arm and keep it, or use this mantra, or maybe uh, they're giving kind of like a different kind of iron or the material to hold it or the rub it. And then you thinking, so you doing it while you doing what the, why you do it is become, so as example, they say, okay, do it three times per day. If you do three times per day and then within seven days and you going to become like this. See, now, it become a ritual to you. You start to do three times per day. Why you do it? Because you have intention to you to become somebody. That is called Sila Bhata Upadhan. All the, the whatever the rituals that you keep doing, it is not for your liberation. It's not for your Nibbana. What is the intention? I want to become like that. Because when it comes to the, the, the idea of Nibbana, there is no that you becoming. That's why it called you attaining to Nibbana. It is, there is no, we can tell you become Nibbana. But you can tell you become a God. So like that, when you have the, the idea to become somebody and with that idea, if you do something as a bodily, verbally or mentally action, and then it this become a sila bhata paramas. As example, to become rich. So repeat this money, 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 money like that. And then you're going to gain money. There are some people practice like that way and visualize every day and maybe it's going to happen. But what will happen? That the, the idea of you become more stronger. I am. I can do this. I can, I can become like this. So that idea become stronger. 
But when it comes to the form, feeling, sensation, formations, recognition, the enlightened masters or the Buddha and themselves, they don't invest their form, feeling, sensation, formations, recognition to become like that. It, it is just experience, moment of experience. In that experience, there is no desire bound experience. Desire glue, or it's like the current we call Chandaraga or the Upadana, the holding, grasping, clinging nature they don't have in their experience. And the fourth one is Attavada Upadana. So Attavada Upadana means that you have, when it comes to ideas or the concept or whatever you believe, you try to prove it. You, you try to permanent it. And maybe with arguments and maybe doing something or making something happen. So like that way, you use your form, feeling, sensation, formations to hold it to the idea that you hold. Atta means self. Vada means idea or the view, you, whatever come to you as idea, the very next day you try to make it real. And we don't want to take it as a, just a thought. See, that is why the world is itself. What is this world? This world is itself full of thoughts. So what you, if you think something today, it's, we call it come to create your mind. So the mind can create many, many things. You don't believe how, how powerful you are to create. You can create that billion, billions things. You are your mind capable to do that. If you start to, to, to do that way, go that way. And even you can make machines to go through this entire universe. And you can, you can make things that to reach to anything. You are capable to do that. Mind can do that. It's not a magic. It is just the, you know, the creative mind. But that anything not going to help for you to get out of the getting old, getting sick and death and change. There is nothing can stop you. Maybe you will create many things, but still that whatever you create, that, that things going to happen. So, when it comes to the, the Buddha's mind or the enlightened masters, they never invest their form, feeling, sensation, formations, recognitions to prove or hold it to whatever the self-centered views or ideas. So then how they live? They live always according to necessary conditions, things in that moment. That is what called dharma. Dharma means in the bottom level of the, the very nature exists, the pure nature of existence. It is not, they don't work for plans. They don't have timetable to do this way or do that way. And they don't uh, get into habits, patterns. They don't have like that. That doesn't mean they don't have skills. But the skill they have, the very clear mind, without bounding to anything. So what is the our nature? We have the mind and we always try to follow that mind. We try to follow our experience. We try to lead this world to permanent this our existence as I am or the self with 
four qualities. One is kama upadana. Kama upadana means desire, satisfaction, looking for satisfaction. And as example, while you eating something. So, four aggregate, five aggregates form feeling, sensation, formation, recognition. So, whatever the food that you eat. So, the food itself is the name and form mixed together. The food itself is the, the form and the feeling. And then uh, the whatever the taste come to you. Sensation, how strong it is and how the, the emotion, emotion effect with that. Formations and right away what is happening while you eating, you bring your past experience to that and match it and compare it, comparison. And that that giving you it, it, it increase the taste and the, the recognition. And then this everything you you get as one and hold as one. That's what we call I'm eating. So then kama upadana means what? Now you experience it. If you're eating, it is okay. But you are not eating just itself. What is happening? While you're eating, you may thinking about the past or maybe you thinking about your future. Oh, next week also I'm going to come to this place. Oh, I want to bring that person also. Oh, I want to take it uh, tomorrow also. So like that. While you eating, what's happening? That taste that you gain, the action you gain, you bound to another future action. Upadana, holding, grasping. So, as example, that when you eating, it giving you the taste, and in that taste, what happening? You think, oh, this is not good. I don't like. I want to go to another place. See. That good or bad, the both way that going to another place also create this moment of what you like or you don't like. So then if you like it, what will happen while you're eating, you start to think about, oh, I'm going to take it for tomorrow. See, already you pass the timeline with the taste. Then what happening? You already bound to the, the tomorrow, upadana. So you hold it to that unseen world. So like that, with our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, whatever we experience, in the moment of the experience, what happening, we jump out of the moment and we go beyond the, the timeline. It can be good or bad, both. So that is what called Kama Upadana. And the Diti Upadana is the, the you're going to prove yourself, oh, I am, this is me. I used to be there and I'm going to be there like that way. And we're reminding it always. We appreciate it always. We gather and we celebrate it always. But the enlightened master doesn't do like that. Because they recognize the name and form and separate the, the name and form. They are able to see to the bottom. And I will tell you why they why they not going to see it like that way. And you also can see it. It is not only for somebody. Because that is the very nature. So, and the Sila Bhatta Upadana is there is no any kind of ritual so hold it to something or praying or doing something, believing that this is going to make me like that. And the Attavada, there is no any kind of that the intention to prove the self-centered the ideas or the views or thinking. So whatever I think or whatever I say it should be right or something like that. So then when come to the moment of the form, feeling, sensation, formation, recognition. Form means whatever the perception come to you. In that very moment, that is the form. So this body 
also as a you can take is as a form sound as a form these pictures as a form so and it brings the feeling sensation and the formations means the, when you experience it there is a history behind it it always go with the history and the recognition these all five things bound together if you able to settle down for a moment and just see the moment of experience without mixing your past or thinking about any future desires in this very moment if you able to experience and see what will happen you start to recognize this everything change moment by moment once you recognize in this very moment your form feeling sensation formation recognition change you know it is not what you think because now you now you see you experience and then you know in the past also same thing happened to your name and the form feeling sensation formations recognition all five aggregates in that very moment arising change arising change in the past also it happened you recognize and not only that if you go if you exist for tomorrow and tomorrow also this moment by moment moment by moment going to change so once you see that you get out of the self centered mind so once you get get out of the self centered mind because it is a collective experience in this in this very moment so once you recognize that you get out of the the self centered authority of the mind and in that very moment you release in the upadana that means holding nature grasping nature clinging nature you release so that is where you freely experience form feeling sensation formations recognition it happening you but there is no grasping clinging holding nature and in that freedom you find your liberation so if we clinging we thinking this is me and then we keep continue keep continue keep continue so we through the meditation we break down the pattern we go to the depth and we see because without seeing you not going to understand how this change so when the mind become sharp and clear it going to see that is the important part my the meditation take you to the point to see once you see the change naturally that you release the the holding grasping nature once you release it even what you experience it 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 nothing to do with desire there are things happen to you in life as example the toys that you used to use as a child maybe when you see it today and that kind of toys you you see it, but deeply you don't have any interest regarding it and sometimes people even the husband wife even the children when you see it today you don't have that kind of you know the desire or grasping holding nature inside you see what happened to you but the thing is you drop it and unknowingly you you still hold it to something it's kind of like replacing so look into yourself and see what happened in the past and that will teach you in this very moment to yourself your life so 
by the time you you will understand this but the dharma means not you understand it later because we don't know that tomorrow we going to be here or not like that way through the practice as soon as possible through the dharma you you come to a point deeply recognize this through yourself and that is what we need the meditation before because somehow one day you going to you going to recognize this whatever we holding grasping clinging is not ours we we going to see it and sometimes we cannot see it we holding that dream we die but other people recognize it but they they hold it to their dream and because of that they cannot see the what happened to us so that is what happening so when somebody died in the you know in a very few days you know you you your life is changed different but later what happening later go back to you know ordinary drama again you keep continuing why that the knowledge that you had in the beginning and the 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 some the, the person died in that day the whatever the 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 understanding came to you why you cannot keep continue that day? because of these four qualities come back to us and keep going keep going why because we we have the clinging holding current so attaining to enlightenment means you neutralize completely this four kind of currents and any more in your form feeling sensation formation recognition you don't have that self centered the desire so start to separate the name and form and do that exercise and you will see and with that sharp your mind and start a little by little little by little neutralize the the desire self centered desire and seeing and recognizing the change in permanent unsatisfactory nature and the selflessness within the soul so with that i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sabbitiyo vajjantu sabbarogo vinasatu mate bhavatantarayo suki digayuko bhava ittavata cha ammi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva namodantu sabb sampatti siddhiya सम्मे भूतानुमोदंत सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया सबे सत्तानुमोदंत सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया इदं मे पुण्यकम आस वक्कया वहन होतु सब दुखापमंचतु ब्लेस यू